Tree aliens? Christmas aliens? In today's video, I'm going to walk you through how these six foot tall props got created. Let's get started. In a DIY home light show, you spend a lot of time planning and designing your props, and you want to get the most out of your displays. Well, in a lot of shows, you see purchase props specifically for a time of season. Around Halloween, you see gravestones and bats and spiders and a bunch of other spooky things. Around Christmas, you'll see a bunch of candy canes, snowflakes, stockings, and other holiday-specific props. In January, I talked with my church's worship leader, and she thought that it would be neat to have lit up Christmas trees accent the sanctuary and provide a backdrop for a choir special. Using X-Lights, I threw together a concept diagram to see how they would work. While this looked nice, I knew that I'd be spending a lot of time and money putting these Christmas trees together, and they'd only be used for like a week or two. Wouldn't it be good if I could also get some use out of these trees in my Halloween show? My wife came up with the idea of exchanging a star on the top of the tree with a head of some kind. Even though at first we thought of dressing up the trees like ghosts, we eventually landed on giving the trees alien heads. This proved to be a great idea, especially with the large diffused eyes, which made two pixels glow like a single large eyeball. Let's dive into the construction. The overview video we made has a lot of outside noise, so I'm re-recording. Here's the basic PVC frame. We used hot sand to make the half circles at the base. We then connected the pieces together with elbows and a T. In the middle where we anchor the lights, we take two PVC caps, a PVC circle blank and a metallic octagon blank and drill a hole through the center. We then secure the sandwich pieces together with a stainless steel screw and bolt. We'll then drill holes in the blank to zip tie the light strips. We'll connect the frame with PVC cement. We'll cement the frame at an 100 degree angle, just off of 90 degrees, so that the tension will keep the light strips taut. We'll put the final cap on. And lastly, we'll sand down the frame with a 220 grit sandpaper so it'll easily take the black paint. Here I'll show how I made the PVC curves for the base of the tree. This particular footage was from forming the driveway arches. The main differences are that in this video I'm forming a 10 foot section of PVC while the base of the tree was a 5 foot PVC semicircle. Also, the form you'll see in this video are boards nailed together, but the form that I used for the base was a large plywood sheet with screws strategically placed in a tight semicircle. Using 3 quarter inch PVC, I measured enough playground sand for 4 5 foot lengths of PVC. I then put the sand into a disposable lasagna tray and baked it in the oven at 450 degrees for 2 hours. Once the sand was baked, I capped off one of the ends of the pipes and poured sand into the pipes. I used thick gloves to protect my hands. The reason I poured sand is that filling the PVC inside and bending it rather than heating the PVC from the outside will prevent kinks in the pipe when forming. When the pipe was filled, I taped it off with duct tape and put it into the form. The form is a set of screws that I put into a wood base on either side of the pipe to hold the pipe in place while it cools. I'd also like to note that you need to make your form into a curve just a little tighter than the arc that you're planning. When the PVC cools, it will want to pull back a little. Lastly, I wait for a few hours till the new arch takes hold. Once the frame was assembled, we created the top held together by two PVC caps and a PVC 4 inch round blank with 3 and a quarter inch metal octagon blank below it. I also found at Home Depot a thicker, more durable external round blank that didn't require the metal octagon to support it below. In order to line up the holes, I printed a paper protractor the size of the blanks. There are six connecting points, so 180 degrees divided by six is 30 degrees. This tells me I needed to space the holes every 30 degrees. However, we want to have the first and last strands not facing perpendicular from the audience. So we start at 15 degrees and then drill a hole every 30 degrees. Using poster board and a five point diagram, my wife cut out a large symmetric star. We used a section of Boscoyo light strip to keep the spacing of the pixels between two inches and maintain a uniform distance away from the edge of the star. Using the leftover cardboard, which was the top of a pizza box, we cut out the star and punched 11 millimeter holes for the lights. Now that we have a cardboard prototype, we'll use it to cut the stars out of black corrugated plastic. This is a plastic that's used in yard signs. 
One of the things we noticed in the prototype tree is that the strips sagged due to tension. The lights pulled on the tree and gave it a sagging look. For the rest of the trees, we angled the backbone section at 100 degrees instead of 90 degrees before cementing. That gave the trees permanent tension, which keeps the lights and the strips taut. We then went back to the original tree and fixed this. At this point, the trees were complete, but Halloween is coming up. We don't necessarily want Christmas trees in the Halloween show. So my wife came up with the idea of taking the 20 pixels that we use for the star and rearranging them to fit some sort of alien head. While the outline of the head could be done in pixels, we wanted some kind of waterproof material to diffuse the light so that two pixels behind would look like one big eye. We went through a few materials and found that a cheap white shower liner from Walmart did the job. That liner diffused the light from the two pixels enough to make it look like a single glowing eye. While we're also in prototype mode, we found that we couldn't attach the topper, whether it's the alien head or the star, directly onto the tree. We needed space for the alien eyes to diffuse, and we also needed space for the pixels to go in through the plastic without going through the PVC. We landed on a T formation at the top. This provided enough stability to keep the topper from twisting left and right in the wind, and a good anchoring place to zip tie the topper to. We also used a pool noodle to provide extra space between the frame and the topper. Lastly, for the alien heads, we have two pixels that needed to be positioned far enough behind the eye so that the light could be diffused. We have a corrugated rectangle with holes positioned far enough back to allow the eyes to light up. When it came time to paint the tees on the top, in order to make sure that the tees were far enough back, we suspended fishing wire between three rods of rebar. We were then able to get an even coat of black spray paint and allow them to dry. Finally, when the tees were dry, we were able to stick them on the top of the trees and then zip tie the heads with the pool noodle in between and the corrugated plastic spacer to the top. That's it! We now have six PVC Christmas trees that can be used as aliens during Halloween. The really creative part comes in the X-Lite setup. In our next video, we'll cover how you can create custom models and sub-models in x lights as well as a few effects that work well with the aliens. Remember to hit the bell to get notified when we come out with our next video. Thanks for watching, and good luck with your next DIY light show project.